Robert Hall. Robert Hall. You save on family clothes. Clothes. For those of you who have been following my videos, you know about the last five or six, I guess the last six, have been on the uh, Atwater Kent Model 37 radio that I've been trying to do a restoration on. And one of the reasons I was able to make some progress on that was I was waiting for the 150 microfarad capacitors, 450 volt types, to come in to restuff the filter capacitors in the television. So they have finally arrived. So the Atwater Kent has been put aside temporarily. And we are, these are the capacitors. And for those of you who are interested, yes, I did. I bit the bullet and paid through the nose for these stupid capacitors. I'm not happy about it. Not so much that I... It's not the money. I just feel like I, I got ripped off a little bit. Uh, they cost too much. They were supposedly made by a leading American capacitor manufacturer and we you know of course the name was not mentioned but I went ahead and did it anyway and it'll probably be the last time I do it but I want this television to work right the first time or at least as close to right as I can get so here's what we're going to do we're fortunate in that we have holes down inside the old capacitor cans and they go all the way through the other side that, that's, that's great so I'll be able to set these uh, capacitors. Let me see if I can get it propped up here a little bit. I can set these capacitors once I get the two wires hooked up. I can set them, run the wires through the holes and have them in there just like that. Is that too cool or what? And of course the wires will come out the bottom and I'll make appropriate connections uh, where, as necessary. Also that's what we're going to be doing today. Also, uh, if I can have, if I get time, I want to replace these blue selenium rectifiers. And just to show you how far electronics has come over the years, this is what's going to replace the selenium rectifier. Can you believe that? Look at the size of that thing. It's minuscule. It is a 1N4007 uh, dial. A silicon diode and it will become uh, there'll be two of them mounted in here uh, and they'll be mounted on these terminal strips and these terminal strips are going to go on those screws like that there'll be one here and one here I haven't yet decided whether or not to completely remove these things and uh, you know just mount them down here on the holes where the screws that hold the, the rectifiers on right now the selenium rectifiers I could mount it there you know, on the down here on the on the plate just as easily as on the end here. But some people have told me, well, you know, you need to leave those selenium rectifiers in there for looks. Now well, I don't know why. <laughs> They're going to disconnect them all. But I don't know. We'll see. If I do decide to mount them on the selenium rectifier, I'm going to go to my favorite hardware store and get some brass screws and make them look a little bit better. These are kind of rusted and muffed up, and they don't even match. They're not the same. The guy who replaced them didn't even put the correct screws back in. Or he could, at least he could have put a, a pair of matching screws in there. God, I just just irritates me sometimes the craftsmanship I see, even from the old timers that were around. So what we're going to do right now is I'm going to uh, go ahead and put some uh, a red and a black wire on each of these two uh, capacitors, and then I'm going to run some heat shrink up and shrink it down, and then we're going to run the wires down through the holes on each of these. Uh, capacitor cans and bring the wires out the bottom and then we'll determine where they have to go by looking at our handy dandy little schematic here and we'll start soldering up the wires properly with the uh, diodes attached to the terminal strip and I'll show you how we'll do that later so hang with me incidentally uh, while I'm doing all this I'm going to be listening to my Halicrafters SX99 I got, oh I guess it's been about a year ago now. I, am, I said I was going to do a YouTube video on it and I haven't got around to it, but I will. I will. I, I really like this radio a lot. Nice, nice radio. With a matching speaker.
We've made some progress. I have the wires uh, soldered on and the heat shrink applied to the capacitors. And I have the uh, diodes in place but not soldered on each of the terminal strips. And I have a heat, a uh, rather a, a, a hot glue gun ready to go. And what I'm going to do is take these capacitor wires, thread them down through, and then put a blob of uh, hot glue right in the center there, which will hold the capacitor in place. Now, the holes that we're going to be running the wires through, I had to, you know, open them up just a little bit bigger. Uh, not so much for the wire, but for the uh, heat shrink and the uh, bump where the, uh, uh, the wire was soldered to the terminal on the capacitor. So let's thread one down through, and then we'll go, I'll show you. We'll go ahead and apply the little, little hot glue in the center, and then thread it the rest of the way down until it dries. And then we'll do the same thing over here on this one. All right, go ahead and put that old blob of hot glue down there in the center like that. Doesn't take a whole lot. Then we go ahead and shove the old cap right on down in there, and that'll hold it in place. It doesn't take a whole lot because I'll be cutting these wires off pretty soon after I uh, get it soldered where I want, and it'll hold it in place. I mean, this thing's not going to have a lot of jarring and vibration anyway. So there they are inside. Now we need to finish the outside. I've gone ahead and soldered the uh, silicon diodes to the terminal strips. This particular sil uh, silicon diode right here, which, you know, they're rectifiers. Uh, one, the anode is grounded. So I went ahead and soldered it to the grounded uh, center tab, or the center terminal on the uh, terminal strip and then of course it is grounded through this screw to this metal plate. This one here is not. This one does not get grounded. And I've gone ahead and, and sort of bent the wires around. What I'm going to do is uh, run this black wire and solder it to this grounding tab you see down here underneath. The red wire will be soldered to this tab right here and uh, then we'll go over and do the next one. That's the way it's laid out on the schematic. The uh, uh, negative end of this 150 microfarad capacitor is grounded and then the other end uh, goes through a wire over to the next capacitor so that wire is this one right here and I could just run it on over there, but I'm not going to do that. I'm going to maintain the integrity of the original wiring if possible and just go ahead and solder the red wire to that tab right there without, you know, without messing things up. Just wrap it around there and solder it. One other thing, uh, you'll notice that the silicon diodes are, are soldered below the terminal tabs here, the terminal connections. Uh, the reason I do that is if ever I need to use uh, one of these as a junction point, I, I can do it without interfering with the existing position of the diode. I like doing it that way. And uh, I don't have to worry about, you know, getting one lead of the diode plus a wire through the same little tiny hole. You know, the hole is totally free. I can easily stick a wire through and solder it up. Works better for me that way. You know, you do it at any way you want. The first wires are soldered and you'll notice I gave myself plenty of extra wire here. You never know what the future might bring. And as usual we'll now go ahead and clean our solder joints up real nice. We want them to look as shiny as we can get them. Even though this newer type of uh, solder just doesn't shine as well as the old stuff did. Alright I think we'll wrap this uh, video up right here. I've got everything wired up and soldered up. I had to remove some of the original wiring more than I anticipated, actually. I didn't want to remove much of it, but, you know, circumstances alter cases, as they say. Uh, what I'll have to do is uh, solder a wire here between the two uh, diodes, and that'll be one side of the uh, transformer, power transformer, and the other wire will be soldered between the two electrolytics which will be this connector right here so we'll have a wire coming out from here and a wire coming out from there and of course then our choke we've got to hook up our choke wire 
and we'll go ahead and put the cans on and that'll all be done hopefully in the next video so I appreciate you being here one more time and we'll hope to catch you next time this is John see these two portable radios well watch this let her go Betsy sorry friend you old-style portables have to go but look at our new RCA Victor portable radio came through without a chip Here's the world's first and only portable radio in the non-breakable impact case. So rugged, it's the only radio case with a five-year guarantee against chipping, cracking, or breaking in normal use. Of course, a tube might jar loose, but that's easily fixed. The important thing is RCA Victor's non-breakable impact case means no chipping, no cracking, no breaking. And hear that tone. It's RCA Victor's great golden throat sound. See the world's only portables with the non-breakable impact case as low as $27.95 at your RCA Victor dealers.